Just, uh, I want to kind of bring a human interest aspect to what I'm going to talk about, which is a very narrow a area. How many, has anybody put in a wood gasifier for a heating system? Anybody? A couple of people? Okay, so I want to explain that. Um, I, um, I'm a fourth generation engineer, system engineer, and um, unfortunately I went to college because I learned a lot of bad things and I'm trying to figure out what I don't know, which is so vast I blow my mind all the time. But um, I made a lot of mistakes. I built a lot of structures. I was in the power business. I built 22 power plants around the country, owned and operated them. I spent most of my time on Wall Street, which was a disaster in terms of human ecology and environmental consciousness and good doing. Um, pretty much destroyed the, the environment where I work. So as a systems engineer, I was a good destroyer of the system. And that's basically what we do. And I think it's an important place to start from, and your presentation was just exquisite. It was beautiful. Thank you for bringing a consciousness around. Every time we put our foot down, we create a very serious footprint. So I'd like to make one request, and then I'll jump in to this very narrow aspect of building. How many people in this room, whether it's your own house or the buildings or the homes you build for, end up being able to tell your client what your energy intensity is per square foot? How many people? Not one person raised their hand. A oh, one person. This is perhaps, this is the language of, of kind of environmental sensitivity, knowing the energy that we put in to our structure. Uh, structures in the Adirondacks are going to be between 150,000 BTUs per square foot to 80,000. So I built a house here in Tupper Lake, which I was kind of born in New York City, but brought up in Tupper Lake 10 years ago. Usually, this is a gross generalization, design is about 10 to 20 to 100 years behind. <laughs> um, and I did not do a good job on my house. So my energy intensity was probably about 110,000 BTUs per square foot. I built a very big house full of leaks. I didn't follow your good advice. I didn't know what I was doing, um, and I learned by my mistakes, and I'm going to build an underground zero-energy home which has no energy use at all. I'm going to actually act, not totally. But so I took this house that I built, and I said, oh, my God, how can I lower the carbon footprint, not the energy use, because I, I actually use more energy with what I did, but it's so-called environmental energy. So I put in a huge solar panel system which then the Wild Center came and looked at and said, we ought to do that, and we helped to put that up. And that's why it got such a high lead rating. And then um, I said, I shut my oil ball, tried to shut my oil boilers down and put in what's called a wood gasifier. This is really a very simple concept. I'll explain it. When you burn wood in your fireplace, you're burning it at 1,000 degrees. And a campfire is about 1,000 degrees, more or less fact check that later because I'm not sure exactly what it is, but basically it's all called open container combustion. And when you start a fire with wood, what goes up? Most of the carbon goes up in heat. That's why there are fireplaces that you hear about creosote fires because what's going up is basically carbon and you're not burning it. Okay, so in a, when you gasify wood, you start off burning it at a thousand degrees and let's say chamber one and then it goes to chamber two and you refire it because you got all that carbon and it goes from a thousand degrees F to two thousand. And it's much more efficient and it's cheaper, although the installation is expensive. I'll, t I'll give you the idea of the cost. I'm going to bring up that side for you. Keep going. This is the Garn site. Has anyone ever heard of Garn? G-A-R-N? Okay, good. If you install this when you build a house, it's not that expensive, although this is an expensive container because basically what it is, in my house I got a large size. This is a water tank, just like a hot water tank on its side. It's 2,000 gallons, but not 50, it's 2,000 gallons. It's very big. And right in there, uh, in the middle of this, all of this is water, see? And in here is your combustion chamber. It's one and two. I'll explain the two chambers in a minute. It, you, you start the fire and then it gasifies, but and the hot 
gases go out around in the maze and it heats the water up. So you have a big hot water tank and then you take the hot water and heat the house up. And that's what I did. But it was a retrofit. So actually it cost me a lot of money to tear out a wall and put it in and I should have built it f from the beginning. But um, okay, this is what it looks like when you load it up. It's not convenient. Okay? <laughs> you got to cut the wood. You got to stack the wood. You got to put the wood in the garage and then you got to throw it in. You get very strong when you finish doing it. 22 cords, not face cords. 22 cords is what I use a year. Um, however, <laughs> 22 cords, all right? Um, I, I cut down my oil intake about 2,400 gallons. This is a 10,000 square foot house. So <laughs> it's a big house. And it's not well insulated. I mean, a lot of it's not well built. <laughs> That's another problem. So if you build your house right in the first place, and you use something like that, this, it's very inexpensive. I burn seventeen hundred dollars, not counting my labor, of wood a year versus ten thousand of oil. So it, it's economic, and the box cost eighteen thousand dollars. Ten thousand. So. Here's how it works again. Um, let me see if I can get a picture of the combustion chamber. It's really interesting. Um, they don't have a picture of the combustion chamber. Okay, I'm going to show you this picture here. Okay, so the first behind this door is a box, right? You see the little bricks in there? Okay, those are fire bricks because it gets real hot. That's a thousand degree right here is a, a circle, and that's where the exhaust goes out, but it's ceramic, and the fumes, I'll call them fumes, the gases go in there, and then air comes in and post-combusted, or secondary combustion, so it goes from 1,000 to 2,000 degrees, and it gets very hot, and the reason it has to be ceramic is at 2,000 degrees you combust metal, you know, if you blow, it's like an acetylene torch, basically. If you heat it up to 2,000 and blow oxygen on it, you'll literally burn the metal up. So that's a ceramic lining. And this is so simple, it can't break. You really can't do anything to break it. It's like hitting an anvil with a sledgehammer. You're not going to break the anvil. Maybe you'll break the sledgehammer. But it's not convenient. However, it's environmentally very effective. Um, I lowered my carbon footprint by fifth, from about 100,000 to 50,000. That's huge. Now, if I didn't have leaks in the walls, it would be almost zero. Because you need carbon to grow trees, carbon dioxide, and you're putting out the same amount of carbon dioxide as you're taking in to grow the trees. So the theory is it's a zero net carbon footprint. That's the theory. And that's why I put it in. Um, and it's very, very effective. Um, and if you have a client who wants to lose weight, uh, and lifting wood <laughs> and cutting it. I lose about four pounds in the, in between June and August cutting the wood. I don't, you know, I like cutting wood, so what can I tell you? But it's, it's a very effective environmental addition. So that's the story. Okay, thank in you. In five minutes. Sir. I don't need any maple syrup. I know, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. So, Sorry about that. Okay. so Dick. So David got us started. You don't know you're not going to have time for this story, but we also have a maple sugaring operation, and we got started on it because David got us started on it and told us how great it was. So I have a, I have a, I have a wood gasifier evaporator. <laughs> so anyway, more on that. This is so. good stuff. Buy this. Everybody buy this stuff. You can drink it straight. 